Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Brennan Mejia and I played a Power Ranger in Power Rangers Dino Charge. Now for those who do not know my show specifically, or maybe you do, you've always wondered what the actors are like behind the scenes. Are they actually like their counterparts they play on screen? Well, we're gonna dive into that and answer those questions, so let's get into it. All right, first we have Camille Hyde, who played Shelby, the Pink Ranger in Power Rangers Dino Charge. So actually, before I even get into what she's like, funny story, before we started filming, we were at one of the callbacks for the audition for Dino Charge, and she walks up to me. I don't even know her at this point. I mean, we're all just auditioning with different people. They're doing mix and matches, like me acting with other Rangers. And she goes, hey, were you ever in Hawaii? And I was like, yeah, I mean, when I was in high school, I went to Hawaii. She's like, were you ever on the island Maui? Yeah, why? She's like, at this hotel, whatever it was. I was like, yes. She's like, I saw you. You used to go on runs in the morning, right? And I was like, yeah, because I was on the cross country team in high school. And she's like, yeah, I used to watch you with my friend and we'd see that one guy running across the beach and I remember you, which is just ridiculous. Like, what are the chances that from high school, you know, however long ago that was to when we filmed, or not even just at the audition room, that I ran into her and she remembered me from Hawaii. So first and foremost, Camille has a good memory. You know, we'll start with that. Uh, also though, on the show, if you get through the entire season, you notice that Tyler, my character, and Shelby, the Pink Ranger, Camille, uh, become love interests. Well, obviously in real life, uh, I was engaged, whether you knew that or not, and am now happily married. So no, we did not actually date in real life. I get that a lot. Never happened, I was already seeing someone and I am now married to that person. We all actually ended up living in the same house in New Zealand, which I don't recommend in a cast. I mean, nothing against the people you work with, whether you love them or you hate them. You're just around each other a long time already on set. And then you come home and you're around each other again. Like there's no time away from each other. So that was the dynamic of Dino Charge, the core cast. It was myself, um, my Blue Ranger, my Pink Ranger, my Green Ranger, and my Black Ranger, my Purple Ranger. We all lived together most of the eight months that we filmed. Finally, at some point, the purple and the pink moved out of the house and we had other people move in, but it was just a lot of time together. Uh, but Camille, yeah, she's nice. Um, she takes her craft seriously as an actor and it was always nice to balance off and play scenes opposite her because you didn't know how she was gonna play the character. In my head, when I would rehearse to myself, I would imagine, you know, the other person saying the line X, Y, Z, like this or that. And then she would come in with different energy than I would expect and it always keep me on my toes. And that just made for more interesting performances. I don't know if you've ever heard, but some people say acting is reacting. So if you have this contrived idea, it can become stale, but she would always give me something to react authentically to, which really lent itself to the different scenes. I don't see her too often these days, now that Dino Charge is done filming. The occasional convention will run into each other, but you know, it's just awesome having had that experience to work with someone who really puts in the effort for the craft. Uh, Yoshi Sudarso. He is an amazing man. I love this guy. I mean, honestly, we coined the name uh, Broshi. You know, that's our, our, you know, our, our celebrity name together, I guess, Brennan and Yoshi. Uh, we hit it off really, really quickly, even in the audition. He was a stunt guy before he was on Power Rangers, and I always thought stunts were super cool. I do stunt work now as well as act, but uh, before I met him, I didn't. And so he was just telling me like how to get into the stunts in the audition room. And then we ended up exchanging numbers because at one of the final callbacks, we were told that was the final audition. We'd have no more. And then they called us in a month later for one extra audition. And so I went in and I saw on the call sheet, on the sign-in sheet, that his name was written. I was like, oh, so that means Yoshi came for this too. And that audition was a lie. It was actually them pretending to audition us, but in the room they gave us a scene known as a cold read where you don't have time to rehearse. They literally just hand you the sides and they're like, hey, we just want you to do it right now, which is really never a thing. You usually have the time to at least exit the, uh, uh, the room to go over the lines, then come back in. But they're like, no, we want you to do it cold. I did the scene, felt really awkward because I never even got to read it to myself. And in the scene, they're like, open this magical box, reveal your destiny, and I open it. And they're like, congratulations, Brennan, you're the Red Ranger. It was a laminated picture. And so once I realized that, I realized everyone's name on that sign-in sheet was also being called in most likely for this fake final audition, meaning they booked it. So I texted him immediately. I was like, hey, did you have an audition today for Power Rangers? He's like, yeah. And you, yeah, which color? Because we knew, obviously they told us. And he's like, blue, you? I was like, red. I was like, yes. I was just so happy 
knowing that we were gonna work together. We trained together so often. Uh, the stunt team, Alpha Stunts, super, super talented stunt team from Japan that does all the Power Ranger stuff and some of them do the Super Sentai would train one of the weeknights after wrapping, after filming. So Yoshi and I would go train with them and they were always like, we don't want you to get hurt. So you can like do some of the warm ups with us, but then you gotta go do your own stuff. So we would, and uh, again, him being a stunt guy before, me being a circus performer, we just always would like trade skills. I would help him with handstands. He would help me with backflips or tumbling or whatever kind. And uh, just super cool. And we'd always joke, like if we could do like the Dragon Ball Z fusion, ha. Huh? I actually, I'm still friends with him. We talk all the time. I saw him the other day. I'm actually gonna see him today. Uh, you know, we don't live near each other, unfortunately, but whenever we have a chance to hang out, it's always a great time. We both also play video games, so we were into Pokemon together. We played Super Smash Brothers. I brought my, I think it was the Wii U at the time, over to New Zealand, and we played that a bunch. And we had our 3DSs, and the Smash game came out on that while we were filming. Amiibos were first released when we were filming, so we would go buy them together at some of the different uh, electronic shops down there. So if you have watched Dino Charge, you may know Yoshi as his character, Koda, who's a caveman. Is not just uh, uh, bike, M many things I uh, not used to. Uh. Obviously, Yoshi is not a caveman, does not sound like that in real life. Actually, his brother Peter, who is the Blue Ranger in Power Rangers Ninja Steel, worked with Yoshi and helped come up with the character and the dialect that they would use for Koda, which was super cool because Peter is a really talented guy as well. So look out for this guy. He's gonna be a star. He's already a star in my eyes. I just wish he lived closer because he's one of my, uh, one of the guys I look up to the most, just again, an actor, a man of God and a family man. So super cool dude. All right, next we have the Black Power Ranger, Chase, or as I know him, James Davies. I love this guy. No one made me laugh more without trying. I mean, it's not even that he was a jokester. He just had such a contagious laugh and energy about him. He's an amazing dancer, singer, uh, fun story. So again, I've been talking about how all of us tend to be connected in weird ways. Well, my connection with James, so he lived in the UK for, I think he said a year or two before doing Dino Charge, uh, he was doing theater. And while he was there, he changed his name to a stage name, which is sometimes you just give yourself a different name in a different location for whatever reason, maybe it's a stand out or there's too many people with your, your actual name, um, or it's just something that you wanna go by. His stage name was Brennan. Like, what the heck is that? Literally, same spelling, everything. So James, or Brennan, is our Black Ranger, and I'm Brennan, which is crazy. When we get to New Zealand, because he's from New Zealand, the rest of us are all from the core cast from America, and we're like, oh, this is amazing. We've never been to this country before. We're on the other side of the world. Um, James, can you take us somewhere that's like, not in America, that we, we don't have, that, that's something new and exciting. He's like, oh yeah, 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 I'll, t I'll t you know, get in the car. You wanna know where he took us that was so New Zealand themed in his mind? He took us to Denny's. I mean, like, I don't know I'm, I, about you, but I'm pretty sure Denny's is like an American thing. My Kiwi buddy decided that Denny's was the place to bring all the Americans to once we got to this foreign country and wanted to see something foreign. Uh, so that's the kind of guy he is. He's just funny, really hard on his sleeve, very in your face, positive energy. Um, you know, he actually, choreographed one of the episodes where Camille, the Pink Ranger, and I, the Red Ranger, had to do a dance together. It was like a talent show episode. And James, they hired to choreograph the dance because he's that talented of a dancer. Sometimes he would show up on set and he'd, again, he'd just be super positive. And he'd be like, all right, so uh, what's happening right now in the scene? <laughs> just like, what do you mean? He's like, well, okay. To give context, it's not that he's not paying attention. It is confusing. Power Rangers, unlike other shows, films and blocks, we do three episodes every nine days, or we did. A block basically means, so let's say we're filming a scene at our ranger base. Instead of filming chronologically, where in those three episodes, we're at the ranger base twice per episode, they'll devote a single day of those three episodes for every scene to be at that ranger base. So you don't always know what's happening because you jump around, you go change your clothes, now you have to all of a sudden know your lines for episode four, but you just finished episode two, but they're all in a block together, and you're like, wait, so what is going on? But it's just funny, because it'd be like a recurring theme with him. And he knew what was going on, but it was just like reminder, like, he's like, oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so this is happening? Oh, right, 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 right. So I just, I love James, and I just wish 
I could hang out with him more. Bring him to America. Bring him to convention so I can hang out with him more. All right, next we have Riley the Green Ranger, or as I refer to him, Michael Tabor. So him and I actually had the same agents at the time we booked Power Rangers Dino Charge. So again, small world. Uh, we all seem to be connected in ways we don't realize. Funny thing, when we were at one of the callbacks together and I first met him, he <laughs> kept pretending that he was Australian. And so he had an Australian accent outside of the audition room. And I didn't know if it was real or not, but like the whole time he just kept pretending he was Australian. Um, I don't know why he chose to do it. Maybe it was just like how he got comfortable, but it was funny. So in one of the callbacks for Power Rangers Dino Charge, him and I got paired together. So sometimes you do auditions where you audition by yourself then they do what's known as a mix and match, sometimes a chemistry read, where they want to see how you look on camera next to other actors or how your chemistry is together. You know, like, do you play off of each other well? And so this scene was never in the show, but it was the Red Ranger and the Green Ranger at like a carnival. And I was basically telling him to believe in himself and that, you know, because he was being all down on himself for whatever reason, I can't even remember. But it was really cool. And I really felt like connected with him in that scene. And he actually told me later on that he thought I was going to get booked as the Red Ranger, which I did, um, based off of our audition together. And then we did other auditions together where we had multiple Rangers in the room, and then they wanted us all like just to hug each other and smile, and then they'd swap out some people, hug and smile again, just seeing how our energy plays off of complete strangers. You know, we don't know each other at this point. Actually, it's funny because his character, Riley, is really smart in the show, and Michael is pretty analytic in real life. He was always talking about like stocks and what to invest in, uh, you know, when we weren't filming. I actually didn't see Michael a lot. Uh, he would hang out doing his own thing. I would either be working out or playing video games or hanging out with my fiance or Yoshi and James. But uh, yeah, he kind of stuck to himself, did his own thing. And then I think on weekends he would go out more with the girls, but again, on set, he was a jokester. One of the times I remember it was one of the Halloween episodes. I think it was in Dino Charge, which is the first season, not Dino Supercharge. We're all supposed to be ghosts. You know, very stereotypical white sheet over you Halloween costume ghosts. And we're in the Dino Bite Cafe, which is where we all work in the show. And he was like, hey, it'd be funny if we switched spots for the scene. No one would know. And we didn't tell the director, we didn't tell the other actors, we just learned each other's lines and we swapped. So I played him in that scene and he played me in that scene and no one knew. We told the director after, and the director actually thought it was funny. But then we had to do ADR, which is when you do your audio dialogue recording, uh, because you can't always hear, the, the, the words don't come out well because we're under sheets and there's a lot of movement. So they have us re-record the lines in a studio. They'll play it on a screen and then you have to say your lines again so they can make it sound nice and clear. So he had to do ADR for me and I had to do ADR for him because we played each other. So I thought that was really funny and it didn't change anything on the show other than for one scene, I was the Green Ranger and the Green Ranger was the Red Ranger. All right, next is Miss Morgan or as I know her, the Purple Ranger, Claire Blackwelder. We bonded over our mutual love for running. We would go running, you know, on our days off together or after filming and New Zealand is beautiful. We lived in this area called Hearn Bay, which was near the, the, the water. So we could go on like this nice three mile run um, or longer that would take us near the beaches or, and, and near like the boats and just amazing. We just run and talk, you know, just about life. Some days she wasn't on set because her character was in the base before she became a Power Ranger in the season finale of season one. So she would be home by herself. And so she would crave to be on set while a lot of us who were you know, overworked at a certain point or felt like it, we were tired, would wanna be home to rest. Our days on set could range, you know, like depending on how many scenes you're in, from a couple, like eight hours or whatever to 12 hours, sometimes 15 hours. You'd go home, you have to memorize your lines, you try to get a workout in, then you wake up, your pickup time in the morning is like four something or five in the morning, go to set, hair and makeup, you're half asleep, and then you do your scenes, and then they have to put makeup under your eyes so you don't look like you're half asleep, but you are. Um, but if you drank coffee, you did better, but since I didn't drink coffee, it was a little harder. But yeah, just different struggles, but Claire's amazing. Uh, we do conventions together still, occasionally. Claire is an amazing pianist, piano player. I mean, just brilliant at piano and singing. So her talents, musically inclined, I actually wanted to pay her to teach me. Um, and they had a piano in the house we were renting, but then they took it out for some reason, so I never got to learn piano from Claire. But uh, she actually um, 
didn't think she was good at like some of the stunt stuff, but she was. And we did stunt training before we started filming Power Rangers. And so Yoshi and I, the Blue Ranger, would train with her and she'd come with us sometimes to the, after we filmed, we'd go to an open gym and train. And Claire was one of the few other Rangers who would actually go with us sometimes. She's a brilliant actor and I would love to work with her again in the future. Ha ha, surviving. So <laughs> Davi Santos, uh, Santos, Santos, whatever. Davi is our gold ranger, and I love Davi. He is just the funniest dude. I say that a lot about a lot of different rangers, but then I'm like, oh, that, this guy was funny too. You know, we have so many rangers, okay? So a lot of them could be funny. I didn't meet Davi in the audition for Power Rangers or any of the callbacks. Um, he did his own audition, I guess, at a different time. Same with James, our black ranger, because James is from New Zealand, so he filmed his audition separate. But yeah, I never ran into Davi until after the fact. One of the episodes where the Red Ranger and the Gold Ranger are having this competition, like who's better? And Davi's character is winning like constantly at everything. And one of his lines when we're morphed and he's in the Gold Ranger suit and I'm in the Red Ranger suit, and I'm like, man, you know, you're, you're so good at everything or whatever I say, something along those lines. And he goes, ah, oh, but so Tyler, I am not the Red Ranger. And I'm like talking to him outside of the scene. I go, that doesn't even make any sense. So you're, you're basically acknowledging that you're better than me at everything but you're not the Red Ranger. Like, who cares? You're awesome. Like, it was just like a running joke because it didn't make sense logically, but it was like a line to make you feel better. It'd be like, man, you're so good at everything. You're like, yeah, I know, but I'm not you. And you're like, you're right, but you're still better than me at everything. I love this guy. He's super talented. He's a martial artist. Um, he speaks, I think, two or th if not three different languages. And he would just, there's this Japanese word, daijobu, which means like, are you okay? Or, and if you're okay, you go daijobu. So it's kind of a, are you okay? And then you say it again, if you're okay. And uh, so we would just say that a lot to each other. Cause sometimes the lines would be like, are you okay? And we'd be like, daijobu? I'd be like, daijobu. And then it turned into calling each other jobu for short. So whenever we see each other, we're like, jobu, 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 which makes literally no sense. We would actually go speak at schools together. You know, they'd want, you know, for career day. So I remember one in my area he came to and it was really cool. We got to go to an elementary school and talk to everyone in the class about what it's like to be actors and Power Rangers. And then we showed them some different like physical abilities like handstands and things. And he's super flexible so he can do like the splits and things as well. And just amazing that he was willing to take the time to encourage the next generation to follow their dreams. And I know a lot of people are just so busy and even though they're busy, they just like, oh yeah, you know, like I, I would love to, but I can't because blah, blah, blah. But if he could, he actually would, you know, despite being busy. And he's like, yeah, I'm busy, but you know, that's awesome. Yeah, let's do that. We still talk all the time. Um, last time I think we talked, <laughs> I was uh, in the jacuzzi at my house and he FaceTimed me and I answered it because I was like, oh, you know, what's up, Davi? He was at a convention in Brazil and he FaceTimes me because some of the fans there wanted to meet me. So I'm like awkwardly in my spa, holding my phone where a bunch of fans are in the background watching me in my spa. And I'm like, Davi, you didn't give me any notice that this wasn't gonna be a one-on-one -on -one call, that a bunch of people I don't know are now all seeing me and they'd come up to the, his phone and they were screenshotting and like taking pictures of me shirtless in my spa through his phone, which so is awkward, but it's just also endearing and funny. And one of the scenes, one of the monsters absorbs a Power Ranger and we think, or I think he absorbs my dad who also is a Power Ranger in the show later on. But when they release him finally from the monster, he breaks free and he's like face down. I roll him over and I'm like, dad? And it's not, it's him. Huh? What? You're not my dad? But that line, everyone on set just made fun of me for the way I said dad. They'd be like, hey, what's up, Tyler? Dad? It's like, shut up, stop making fun of me. Um, I thought it was fine. I mean, how do you say dad in a scene you think your dad is your dad and it's not, it's just this random guy who's wearing gold. Anyway, Dobby's awesome. Hang out with him more if you ever get the chance. Tell him I say hi and Jobu Jobu. Okay, so now we're on to the Aqua Ranger. So the Aqua Ranger, his name in the show was James, which is our Black Ranger's name in real life, but his name in real life is Ruben. So Ruben played my dad in the show. We did a chemistry read together. So a chemistry read, basically, they wanna see two actors do an audition together to see how they play off of each other. I was already cast as the Red Ranger at this point. I was already in New Zealand filming multiple episodes, but they brought him, and I think I did a chemistry read with one other guy who was going for playing my dad. But we took pictures together, we did the scene together, we talked, we hugged, just to see how we reacted um, 
to one another's energy and presence. And I got along with him super well. And I, this scene actually, the fact that he's holding a baseball makes me feel really bad. And the entire first season, Tyler, the Red Ranger, his dad went missing 10 years ago and he's been looking for his dad ever since. And he believes he's still out there. And you find out in the storyline that he left because monsters were after him when he found the Aqua Energem and he didn't want to put his family in danger. But then eventually I become a Power Ranger and he reveals himself to me because now we're both being hunted by monsters. Might as well work together. But there's a scene where my character finds like this treasure box that him and I hid a long time ago. And I'm like, oh yeah, we used to play baseball together. So I pull out the glove and the ball, um, kind of as foreshadowing that we're gonna end up playing catch again, you know, when we finally reunite. And so we do reunite. And that day we filmed was his birthday, Ruben's birthday in real life. And you know, it's fine though. We're just throwing back and forth. I'm not a baseball player either really, but you know, uh, he looked away for one moment. Someone caught his attention and I didn't catch that he wasn't looking. So I threw the ball, he turned around and I pegged him right in the face on his birthday. I think it was his first day on film on Power Rangers, gave him this gnarly cut across his face, bruising. And I was like, oh my gosh, I felt so bad. And so I, I went up to him like, I'm so sorry. Cause like it hit him hard. And he was like, oh, you know, and uh, you know, he's trying to tough it out, but it hurts and it marked him up. It wasn't like a oopsie. Um, and uh, they put like a little butterfly suture bandaid on, but if, and makeup over it. But if you watch that episode, you can see that there's a cut under one of his eyes and it's my fault. But I was like, I'll buy you a steak dinner. I'm so sorry. So I, I kept good on that. So we had like a ranger guy day one day. So all the guy rangers all hung out and we just had like a bro day and, or night and we went to the steakhouse and I didn't eat red meat at the time. So I got like this ravioli pasta, which Yoshi still makes fun of me, my blue ranger to this day for how expensive the pasta was for like four little ravioli. Just because I'm not eating meat doesn't mean I don't want to eat a lot. Um, but I bought him an expensive steak to make up for it and he forgave me. And I actually got to see him again uh, at Ranger Stop, which is a Power Ranger convention in Florida last year. So we got to talk and just catch up. He brought his wife, I brought my wife. And so we just had a great time. And again, a person I'd love to go hang out with more. Again, he just lives in New Zealand, it's hard to see him. But yes, I pegged him in the eye with a baseball. Felt bad, but I bought him a steak. Ooh, next we have the Graphite Ranger. Prince Philip, real name Jared. And you're like, graphite? When the heck did Power Rangers get graphite as a color? Super lovely dude. Um, he was from, I think, I can't remember if he's from New Zealand or Australia. If I say the wrong one, I'll get in trouble. But he's not from America. But anyway, he lived down there, so I didn't meet him until we moved to New Zealand to film. And he is such a talented, good looking guy. I mean, I believe he's working pretty regularly now on shows in New Zealand as he should. I mean, look at that smile. I mean, heck. My smile makes me look goofy compared to that. <laughs> but uh, I love Jared, super cool dude. Just always down for whatever the scene called. Uh, didn't get to hang out with him as much as the other Rangers just because again, a lot of us from the core team from America lived together. He didn't live with us. Um, so I saw him primarily on set and a couple times off the set just for fun. But I was usually so tired after filming, I didn't go out. We only had one day off a week. So five days were filming. One day was ADR, which is the audio dialogue recording. Some say the D stands for digital recording, whatever. It's basically where you go watch the episode and you have to re-record your lines because the wind was too much or you couldn't hear what they said. Or when the stunt team is in the suits, you have to say the lines because you know they're saying lines in a different language or not sounding like you, but uh, yeah. So six days a week of work made me really tired. So my one day off, I wanted to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, not too many stories that I can think of off the top of my head, just because I didn't have as much time with him as I would have liked, but great dude. Hope to see him again one day. And um, yeah, he rocks that graphite color. What can I say? <laughs> All right, so this bad boy, played one of our villains turned kind of anti-hero towards the tail end, spoiler of season two. Heckle is his character's name. Ryan is his real name. I love him. I actually saw him recently at Ranger Stop, the same con I saw the guy who played my dad, Ruben, and we hung out together, him, myself, and my wife. We went to downtown Disney and just got to catch up because again, I don't get to see him very often. The blue in his hair, I mean, they didn't actually dye his hair if memory serves. It was just, you know, part of his makeup routine. And then his character had a tattoo as well. Again, not a real tattoo. They just put on a temporary tattoo. Uh, but depending on your character and how much work goes into making your character look different than how you look in real life, you have to get the set way earlier than everyone else. So my character literally 
My big thing was I had to shave. Just, I grow facial hair really quick. I shaved last night. It's already kind of growing back, if you can see that through the camera. So I sometimes, Davi and I, our Gold Ranger, would have to shave twice a day, even with makeup over it, just because our beards are so, I guess. He had to come in a little bit earlier, I imagine, but he would drive himself because, again, he lived in New Zealand at the time. He wasn't from the States. So if you're from the States, they would send a cast driver to pick you up and bring you to set a specific call time. But if you lived in New Zealand, you were hired as a local, and then you had to drive yourself to set. So didn't hang out with him a ton outside of filming, but every time we got a chance to film with him, it was great. He actually tended to film with our second unit. So you're like, what's a second unit? So sometimes you call like unit A, unit B, or uh, first unit or second unit. First unit is typically where all the acting stuff is done. Second unit or a splinter unit is a lot where the stunt stuff is done. Even though his stuff was acting heavy, they put him on second unit just because his character was around all the stunt guys in the suits being the monsters. That's all stunt people. So he would film by himself. Well, I mean, he was with people, but not with like the core cast um, because he was in the bad guy ship, which was all you know, people in rubber monster suits. So he didn't get a lot of interaction with us until later on in season two, where we got to talk to him face to face in scenes and kind of fight him sometimes. And that was always fun. But I wish there were more episodes where we got to work together or fight or just film together, you know? So Power Rangers Dino Charge ended in 2016, but I got to return in a future Power Rangers season. So if you want to watch that video and have me break it down, click here.